Friday nights after the game, you know, we always tell the kids, at the end of the game, we win the game and say, hey, you've got another 14 hours to celebrate. Have fun, enjoy this. We're gonna come back in the morning and, and we're gonna get after it. Or, you know what, you have 14 hours to commiserate. When you get back here tomorrow, we're, it's a new day and we're moving forward. So we'll bring the kids in at 8 a.m. You know, the offense will lift while the defense watches films of the game and then, the, and then we'll flip it. And then after we do that, special teams will do their deal. After all the kids have done that, four of the teams will go out and do community service and the other guys will have the weekend off. I have my coaches, they have their assignments. They know what they have to get done by Sunday morning when we come back in at 8 a.m. to game plan. So they have to have their work done by then. If they want to stay at school and work on it all day, fine. They want to go home, they want to watch a game, fine. I don't care when they do the work, I do care that Sunday morning when we all come back, we're all on the same page and we're ready to go with the game plan. And obviously you can break it up a million different ways. So we'll spend usually eight to noon I say eight to noon, but it'll go much, you know, go, you know how we are, we're all, we're tortured souls, it's never enough. So, so we'll work all day long if we need to. We'll get the game plan together, we'll get PowerPoint scattering reports out to the players, we'll get the huddle film to them so they'll be able to watch. And again, it gets back to the investment of the kids at that point, I'll know the next day if they've watched their films. I bring my quarterbacks in, they're gonna, I'll know right away if they looked at their PowerPoints, because I'll have questions in there for each one of the players. You know, quarterback, you know, what'd you have for uh, dinner last night? Something stupid like that. And if he didn't watch PowerPoint, he's not going to be able to answer the question. Say, hey, well, what did I ask you in a PowerPoint? And he's not going to know. So little things like that. But, but we'll, we'll bring him in on Monday. We'll do chapel in the morning. We'll go into practice in the afternoon. Now, I'm tweaking that this year. In the past, Mondays used to be a recognition day for us. But we're doing a recognition during, during lunch. Because again, we're trying to get be more productive. We're not trying to keep the kids as long. But it was Mondays used to be recognition. And we would go through, we'd have be helmets only. And we would go through their entire offense. The, these are their base formations. These are their top running plays. These are their top passing. These are their concepts. These are the screen games. So we're going to walk through everything that they're going to do. We're going to have scouting reports on that Monday before the practice. And it's all mental. This is what they do, this is who they are. And then we'd come out Tuesday. Tuesday was a, always a heavy day and Wednesday was always a heavy day. What are the focuses on these days? Well, it'd be simple. Defensively, we're gonna focus on read scheme. We're gonna focus on, this is, these are the, the base stunts we're gonna run. This is read scheme, these are their blocking concepts. So we're gonna go through that. We're gonna really hammer that hard. We'll go with our base coverages. We're going in the game believing this is what we're going to run against them. This is the keys. We're running these coverages because this is the guy we have to take away. These are the concepts we have to take away. And we'll walk through that. So that's Tuesday. And then Wednesday will be now we're going to add our blitz package. We're going to get after it. These are the blitz concepts we're going to use. They should know all of these on Monday because we did the walkthrough. Tuesday focus is this is the bread and butter. This is what we're going to be running the majority of the time because of what they do. Wednesday, all right, we get them in situations. Third and long, this is the blitz package we're gonna run. They go two minute, these this is what they, they like to run, this is what we're gonna run. So all the peripheral stuff, the, the meat and potatoes Tuesday, Wednesday, now we're gonna get the, you know, all the, the sides. So we're gonna hammer that, and then on Thursday, it's a walkthrough for us. If we look at offensively, what we're gonna do, same thing. These, this is their base defense. This is their base coverage. This is what we're going to focus on. This is what they do 60% of the time. Why, so why are we going to run what we're going to run? These are our run plays. These are our play action plays. This is our five step. These are the screens. So our playbook that was this big is now six pages long. Then on Tuesday, when we come back, we're going to focus on the run plays against what they run the majority of the time. Maybe we decide it's an angle slant team. We're going to focus on inside zone more. In the, so we're running inside zone 60% of the time. We're gonna run a little gap. It's only 20% of the time. So I'm gonna script 60% inside zone, 20% gap. And then the peripheral stuff. So we got 80 there and we're gonna run a little stretch, 10% stretch. So we'll, we'll script accordingly. So you get your, your meat and potatoes on Tuesday and then on Wednesday, now we're gonna go situations. Third and 10, what are our third and 10 plays? What are our third and six plays? And I'm gonna have three. This is what we're getting. You're not gonna be in third and long. How many plays? four, five. So I'm going to have our key, th our key runs and our key passes and our kids are going to rep that in situations. This is what they like to do. So 
that's when the chess games come comes into play. And that's what Wednesday is. This is the situational deal. We'll focus on our two-minute offense. We call our bomber offense. And then we uh, we clean it all up on Thursday and we do walkthrough. You know, kicking game walkthrough situations. It's all helmet only on Thursday. We want to have fun with it. We want the kids to be relaxed. We like to play music to simulate crowd noise. Kids enjoy it. You'll see kids dancing on the field sometimes in between plays. Again, it's got to be fun. You got to enjoy it, but you also have to have a purpose. We get back to purpose. What is the purpose? Simulate crowd noise. Coaches have to coach at a higher decibel because of the noise, because of the music. Kids have to focus a little bit harder. Quarterbacks going through cadence, it's tough to hear. Each coach will do play playlists that they'll email their kids on huddle on the things they want them to focus on. Then it gets back to investment on the, the young man. Is he actually going to sit down and invest in this? If you have a starter, he's going to invest more than the scout team guy is. We, we already know that. But I always tell the scout team guy, part of the reason you're on scout team is because you lack the investment. We're blessed. We have lunch periods that are an hour and 10 minutes long where every student in, in the school is free. So I could go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and I can tell you where my quarterbacks are. They're in my office. They're eating lunch. We're watching film breaking it down, talking about different things. You've got 20 minutes. If you want to stay longer, I'll stay here all day long with you. And what we're trying to get away from is holding kids after. After practice, they need to go home because guess what? They have to read that Shakespeare play. They have to worry about their chemistry uh, test tomorrow morning. We try to get them home as soon as we can after practice. That's why we try to do the bulk of the work either. You know, even in season, we lift in the morning. Offense lifts Tuesday morning, 6.45 to 7.30. Defense, 6.45 to 7.30 on Wednesday. Why? So we can get them home after practice as quickly as we possibly can. We play a national schedule for a bigger school or a private school. We only have three other teams in our league, so we're only guaranteed three games from our league. So we have to find seven games. So we'll travel this year as far as to Nashville, Tennessee. We'll travel to Indianapolis. We'll, years we'll travel to Cleveland. So. Our process is different based on whether the game's local or whether it's a distance trip. For local games, our Fridays are pretty simple. Immediately after school, we're in the chapel and we have team mass. As soon as team mass is over, we go into the cafeteria and we have a wonderful mom's club that they take care of catering uh, the food for the kids and we'll eat as a, as a team. After we eat as a team, they're going to have about an hour break. They're going to be able to get taped, they're going to be able to relax, and then we'll have meetings back in the locker room, and then we'll do our pregame. That's for home games. If we do away games, again, it comes down to how far away is the drive. If it's a close game, if it's local, we'll follow the same protocol that we do for home games, only we'll leave, you know, we'll short, I'll shorten it a little bit so we can leave a little bit earlier. The away games, that's when it becomes a little more difficult to negotiate. You have to figure the drive. We used to spend the night when we would travel to Cleveland but it would cost ten thousand dollars because we travel everybody so you're talking about hotel rooms for a hundred and 124 kids and then my entire coaching staff and then you're talking about meals dinner meals and breakfast and it was pretty pricey so in order to try to save some money for the school we decided to go up and come back in the same day so let's take my cleveland trip we'll play uh, saint ignatius around 2 30. so we're going to get the kids in here at 7 a.m we're figuring it's about a four and a half hour trip. We're going to give ourselves an additional 30 minutes because we're going to stop midway at a rest area. We're going to get out. We're going to stretch our legs. Coach T may put them through a free stretching regiment, and then we're going to eat. And we're going to make sure that we're eating two and a half hours before the game, whatever it is, and we're going to relax. We'll get back out on the bus, and we'll travel directly to the site. And when we get to the site, that's where we're going to do our position meetings. And we'll go through our regular p protocol there. What we try to do is keep everything as consistent for the kids as we possibly can. We don't want to change anything. I think kids are creatures of habit. They get into a zone. They know what's expected. If you start changing, kids, why are we changing? Panic ensues. And, and that's why, hey, this is a business trip. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to try to focus on the same deal, only we're going four and a half, five hours. Well, at the end of the game, you know, the kids will shower. Whether it's the school that we're playing, supplying them with, with sandwiches and snacks, whatever, taking on the bus, or we'll do it ourselves. But the kids are always going to be fed as soon as, 
as they're boarding the bus, they're handed, they're gonna get a real a couple of sandwiches, they're gonna get chips, they're gonna get some Gatorade to drink, some ice water, whatever they want, and we're gonna board the buses and we're gonna go. After a game, they wanna celebrate. They, they wanna celebrate with their buddies, they wanna see their girlfriend, but they wanna get home. And, and the coaches are the same way. We don't wanna hang out there. If it's after a loss, you wanna get us out of there as quickly as you possibly can. So we'll get the food and we'll eat on the bus going back and we just make sure it's cleaned up afterwards. You know, we, you wanna get the kids back at a safe hour so they're driving home as well. Uh, you don't wanna screw around with that.